Met Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. This morning we prayed uh, the collect, uh, give us grace. Give us grace to receive the fruits of Jesus Christ on, and his cross. Give us grace though also to follow him daily, right? To give us grace to follow Jesus uh, daily. Uh, I was with some friends this week uh, at a conference uh, doing some of my own training, some of my own preparation for the year, and uh, I was with a a good friend of mine, Tricia Lyons, uh, one of, probably one of the most fantastic, engaging speakers, teachers, professors, storytellers that I know, and um, you're going to wish I hadn't talked to her, because there was something that just stuck with me from that conversation this week, and this is what happened. She told me about a group of people called the JVC, JVC, and in the 1950s in Alaska, the Jesuits, the Roman Catholic Jesuits, which is a, a, a brotherhood of monks, uh, the Jesuits uh, created the Jesuit Volunteer Corps, JVC, Jesuit Volunteer Corps, uh, and it was a program that invites uh, young leaders to serve those in need. The JVC's mission is to create a more just and hopeful world to help us follow Jesus in grace every day. By placing volunteers in any inner city neighborhoods and rural communities, and uh, today they're in about 36 different cities in the U.S. uh, alone. Uh, They work with groups like homeless, abused women and children, immigrants, refugees, the mentally ill, the uh, people with HIV and AIDS and other uh, illnesses, as well as the elderly. The JVC's goal is to foster personal uh, growth for everybody who participates. So for every young leader who joins the JVC, they want them to come out on the other side transformed and different, not just having done good work, right? They want them to be changed. After years and years of this work, the young uh, graduates of this program came up with a motto. Are you ready? The motto is this, ruined for life. That's the motto. That's the way they had to describe what happened to them and their time in the JVC Corps, what they decided most described what happened was they were ruined for life. And there is a double meaning there, which is important to understand. Because for over 70 years, the JVC program has ruined the way these volunteers saw, experienced, and participated in the world. In fact, they're so committed to the experience of God and Christ through this and the opportunity to help others that no matter where you find one today, they are offering their lives as offerings to Jesus Christ and trying to understand how to live differently in this world from their experience. Now today, we're here and we're going to baptize Olivia Henry and Garrett, and we're going to confirm, John, uh, receive John and Julie into this church. And let me just tell you, I hope that if your experience hasn't already done this, and God, parents, I hope you're going to do this, I hope this church ruins you for life. <laughs> right? You get what I'm saying? Ruin for life. You know, Jesus once asked the 12 disciples, because I don't think following, I mean, we all want to just pretend following Jesus was easy. But I don't think it was easy. Now, otherwise, why would we pray, by grace, help us to follow Jesus daily, right? We wouldn't have to pray it if it was so easy. And one time, probably after he was being a little difficult, you know, just a little bit, as the Son of God might be from time to time with us humans, 
He said to the 12, do you all want to go away? Do you all want to go? And you know what? They said, Lord, where would we go? You have the words of eternal life. You have come, we have come to believe and know, they said, you are the Holy One of God. Let me just tell you, they were ruined for life. Peter, the followers of Jesus, Paul, first saints, they were all ruined for life. And I am curious, as I ask myself this week, and I ask you, has Jesus truly ruined your life? Completely reoriented your life, what you believe, how you direct your hours in your day, how you share what you have and how what you do and with your time and energy is transformed because Jesus ruined your life. Has the Episcopal Church so formed you in your life that you are ruined for the living of life before you enter the, the world on Sunday mornings? After you listen to the words we pray and the songs we sing and the scripture, after you consume, as we were told in today's gospel, the bread of life, of eternal life, are you so transformed that you can no longer see the world and the people in the world as you saw them before you met this church? Are you so ruined that you see your life from the vantage point of Jesus upon his cross that you see your neighbor as Jesus saw perhaps the rich man, as Jesus spoke to his enemies? Is that how you see the world now? Do you see life from the vantage point of Jesus' place at the River Jordan, the tomb or the road to Emmaus, such that you can no longer see the world as it pretends to be in its sin and in its complexity of diversion? Are you so ruined for life that you have a life of those in your church and your family circle and friendship circle that you ruin their lives by being a part simply by the goodness and faithfulness of living your daily life because of Jesus. You don't even have to say anything to ruin other people's lives by being generous and kind and helpful. Everything from opening a door to giving a little bit, to doing great things or little things, picking up a phone and calling somebody, everything ruins your life for Jesus. And is it just ruining there so they see that the world as we see it today is not the world that God imagines? God disrupts humanity in the person of Jesus. And if you think you have to earn God's love, you don't. I want to be very clear, this is not about getting into heaven. Jesus took care of that once and for all upon a cross. That is taken care of. The question is whether you're going to live in that kingdom today and begin to participate in a ruined life for Jesus. If you think you've done something so terrible, God will not forgive you doubt God's power on that cross? You're so powerful, you think you can undo the mighty son's work. Instead of saying, dear Lord, I just got to get on my knees and say, I'm sorry. I know what I did was not right. I obviously was not ruined for this day. How many of those do you have? They come all too often for me, and I'm a bishop. All too often. If you feel so much shame to believe that you're not beloved by God, you are mistaken. I went to the Santana con uh, concert last night <laughs> to prepare for this sermon. <laughs> but you know, even Santana got that right. He said, you are loved and be loved. He got that right. Here's the other thing that you think 
about often, and I find this all too often, I'm afraid. You think you can practice this kind of ruined life without sacrifice, right? Am I wrong about that? Ooh, I think I am right on the button. You actually are going to have to choose to live a different life and sacrifice those things you've come to depend on and think are going to save you. That's the truth. We grow up in an unsteady world, my friends. But the devil's got you if you think it's going to be easy or that you can do things to make it easy. I have yet to meet one person who is not plagued by sin and the fear of death in their lives, no matter how little or how much they have. You're going to have to sacrifice, and the first one is this. And I know you're like, you don't, you're like way too much in our business, and it's Sunday morning, and I wish you'd stop right now. You got to pray, people. And not for a few minutes in an hour every Sunday. If you want, you know, people are like, how are we going to change this? How are we going to change that? How are we going to change our life? Well, the first, you actually have to pray. And, and if you don't know what, one time I went to my mom, I said, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to God. She said, go ask your dad. Because my dad was the priest. And he said, well, just be quiet. And maybe sometimes you need to say, good morning, God. That's all I needed. And it's been pretty good since then if I remember to do it. But you got to do it. You got to pray every day. And when you come up, this, and not just like when you're on the airplane and it gets a little bumpy. You got to pray all the time. It's what enables your faith to be ruined for when the disaster happens. It's not the disaster that needs your prayer. It's everything that led up to the disaster in your life that needed the prayer to prepare you to know that whatever befalls you will not have the last word. And you're going to have to read the Bible. You're going to have to read. Going to have to read the Bible. <laughs> and not by yourself. Some of you say, oh, I'll read the Bible every day. Well, you know what? Uh, unless you become a saint of God, you probably need some help reading that Bible. There's a big uh, bunch of... Uh, uh, people upset this week because one of the great theologians that's still living said we should take the Bibles away from them. Well, that's probably mostly because you got five of them in your house that you don't use, right? Just get one. You just need one. Get that Bible out and read a little bit every day. I, now listen, you got to do the. I always feel so shamed by reading. I don't read the Bible enough, you know. So they have these programs, you know, Bible and. Nine hours a day. Stop, stop. You just get the Bible out. Open it up. Read a sentence. Oh, what's that mean for me? What's that mean? How's that going to, if I'm going to carry that Bible passage, we used to have to memorize them. I'm not saying you have to memorize them. Just take it with you all. Write it down. Put it on your screen. Take it with you. And... You got to come to church. We were talking, and Mark's too sweet, but I'm the bishop, and next week y'all go back to however you want to do this. But Mark's like, it's not like you can tell them they can't come to church. You have to go to church. If you want your life to be different, you actually have to come to church. I'm telling you, you should come to this church, and you can go to any Episcopal church you want to, uh, but you just have to go to church. Please go to a church. I've had so many grandmothers who would be so happy if their grandchildren just went to a church. They don't care anymore if they would go to their church. They just won't go to a church. But you have to go to church because you have to hear people tell you things like I'm telling you today, which is the truth as uncomfortable as it might make you. Now, the last thing I'm going to say before we uh, in this very long-winded sermon, and you say, start writing emails to Trisha about how she shouldn't have told me this story, is this. 
I actually learned something important, and it's a Christian practice, but it made its way into uh, uh, the 12 step programs, Al Anon and uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. And that is this every day, you have to be grateful for something. In our church, the most silent time in our prayers is the prayer of thanksgiving in the prayers of the people. Have you noticed that, like me? I've been a minister in this church for 30 years, and hardly anybody speaks a word when we say, what should we give thanks to God for today? Man, I'm telling you, if you can't ruin your life, if there is only one thing, one thing that I got into your ears today, if you could begin to live, I will ruin your life. This church will ruin your life for sure. If every day you can give thanks for one thing. And it should be different every day. Find something different. Because if you can be grateful for the God who has saved you by grace, has saved you, how can we expect by grace for you to follow him every day. You all, you do not have to join the JVC to be ruined for life. You don't even have to join the Episcopal Church. But I hope you are ruined. And I hope great is the fall of the life that you are tired of living right now. And that you are so ruined that you might find a bit of God's love for you and learn how beloved you are so that you, just you, as you are today, might ruin the lives of those around you with so much goodness and grace and love that people will wonder, what happened to my friend so-and-so? I want to know, why are they changed? And they start asking you questions, and you tell them, just like I did, you're going to be sorry I told this to you because I'm about to ruin your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.